All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Selena here at the IMAS, and today is Workshop Wednesday. And today we're going to be learning um, about still life drawing. Um, if you uh, have not heard of Workshop Wednesday before, we do this monthly on the third Wednesday of every month. And we pick a type of art to practice or maybe art inspired by other artists. So today we're focusing on um, still life where you basically have an object before you and you just try to draw your best. Today we're going to be focusing on still life with colored pencils so we can get some vibrant colors inside and use color for depth to visualize what we're seeing. So if you were lucky and you got a kit, um, Workshop Wednesdays come with three kits. Um, if you register and claim one. Um, but if you didn't get a kit, no worries. Just grab some uh, supplies from home and you can follow along. So eight, uh, Workshop Wednesdays are uh, supported by HEB Helping Here. And that's what helps us get all these kits out for everybody and a lot of the supplies we get from them as well. So they have a great selection of art supplies. My favorite, I would say, is Missions HEB Plus. They have so many goodies. So this is what the bag looks like. It's from HEB. It's a reusable bag. It uh, looks like that. And then inside we have some manila paper for drawing. Now, if this is too big for you, just grab some scissors, which I might do in a little bit. And I'll probably cut this down to some smaller sizes. It also comes with, ooh, look, some scissors. Oh, that's what I'm going to do in a bit. Thank you. And inside we have... Oh yeah, we have an annual jury show coming up for members. So with the membership, um, there's a lot of perks in it. There's different levels of uh, membership. So if you don't know about that, um, there's some information here for you. We're going to be doing a member show. So every member gets a chance to submit their artwork to be in the jury show that will be up on display in the galleries uh, during October to December. And registration is over by the, oh, you have to be over 18 to, uh, to be a part of this show. So just look at that information if you're curious. And again, there's some membership information on there. Inside, we have a 50 pack of colored pencils from HEB. I am so excited to get in this and excited for everyone who got one of these. And if you're looking for these, again, HEB, and these specifically, that, well, they were pretty much everywhere. We went to every HEB to just kind of look around. And oh, we also have a sharpener. And inside, if you look in the crevasses, don't miss it. There's some information on the artist who designed this bag, who's actually here from McAllen, Texas, which is really cool. And they got their degree from the University of Texas Pan American before it was UTRGV. So look at some information on that and support that artist. So I'm gonna put this stuff aside and I'm gonna get ready to do my still life drawing. So I have all my stuff here. I really wanna immediately look at all the colors that I have available here. Again, it's a 50 pack of color pencil. And they're kind of like sorted in a rainbow already. That's what the front looks like. And you've got some, ooh, like earth tones on the back as well, so I'm going to probably be running around through all those colors. And so for items, when you're doing a still life drawing, you can literally draw just about anything that you can see before you, preferably something small that you can put in your hands. Um, so I have some fake fruit. You can grab real fruit from the home. Um, just you want to keep in mind that if you are a beginner at drawing and you're drawing a banana, and it might take you a few days, maybe you want to do something that hard, so it doesn't spoil over a few days while you're working on a project. Um, but we have fake fruit. I also grabbed a few items from our gift shop. I grabbed an IMAS teddy bear and a little rubber ducky here. I'm going to start off with the rubber duck. It's probably a little bit easier than this bear. There's a lot of texture on that one. So if you're looking for objects to start off with, choose something very, very simple and something that doesn't have a lot of texture. Uh, texture, again, can just make it um, a little bit more advanced. So if you're a beginner, again, choose something simple. So this is full, my full sheet of paper. It's very large. It's bigger than a um, probably a notebook size. If you wanted a notebook size, you could probably get four sheets out of this. So I'm going to fold this in half, and I'm probably going to fold it again. Or maybe not. Let's see. By the 
way, registration is already open for next month's workshop Wednesday. It, again, if this is the first time you hear about it and you really want to join in, I would say register today because that goes very quickly. Those free kits go like, you know, like m and <laughs> So in front of me, um, I also have this board. Um, you want to choose a flat surface to draw on something like carpet might just make it a little bit harder. So you can grab a book or just find a nice smooth table to draw on. And I'm going to put my paper right here. I'll save that extra paper for later. So again, I want to start off with this rubber duck. And this is a 3D object. It will give you shadows and certain lighting and some highlights as well. There's a lot of reflection on this beak here. So as I'm drawing, these are just things I'm going to be keeping in mind. You can see a shadow on the table as well, which is something I, I think I'm going to want to practice here. So you might be seeing it from a completely different angle, of course, than I am. You're seeing it from this direction and I'm seeing it from this side. So as I draw, I'm just going to basically go over some techniques that you can use to advance your drawing skills. And it won't necessarily look like what you're seeing right now. But let's get started with these colored pencils. So I'm using color, not a regular pencil. And I'm going to start off with something white that is like the color that I'm seeing. So this is pretty similar. I'm sure there's maybe a color that's more similar to it. But again, I want to start off with something light. If you start off with a dark color, like black to outline your object, um, then, I mean, that is a style, but if you want it to look a little bit more like what you're actually seeing, this is something I recommend is to use a color similar. So this is an orange duck. And again, I'm just going to draw it from my perspective. Let me find a good spot. I want you all to see his face while I draw, so I'm going to put him right there. And I'm going to use this whole sheet kind of just like a practice sheet. It's not going to be a final kind of art image. This is, for me, this is for practice. But feel free to do what you like and like best. So when I draw, I like to use basic shapes. That's where I always like to start. And when I talk about basic shapes, I'll flip this over in a little bit, but basic shapes, we got circles, we got kind of like squares, we have rectangles, sometimes triangles, and we'll see this in some of the items that we have before us. This is definitely circular with maybe a square-like shape here. This is very oval and curved, so that could be something I like to call organic shapes. So sometimes we just have like these very flowing shapes with no um, corners or edges. There's not a specific shape to it. This is a crescent-like shape, so that's another shape you've probably seen in some objects. And even in this one, we have kind of like an oval on the bottom and oval on top. It's very organic itself. <laughs> so again, these are some examples of basic shapes you're going to find. And when I look at my, um, my object, I see circles right away. So I'm going to flip this over and this is where I'm really going to practice. So actually, why not? Let's stick it. Let's stick to this and we'll just we'll go through an example. So from what I'm seeing, I see the head in a circular shape, and I'm actually going to draw upside down. This is not my perspective, but I imagine this is what you're seeing. Maybe like the body shape. This has got an oval here and a circle here. Something like that. And if you see that tail, you might see this shape here. Kind of like a triangle, but a little bit more curvy. And then you'll, you're probably seeing the beak about right here. So this is what I mean by basic shapes. I haven't fully drawn my image yet, but again, we have, I'll kind of point them out with different colors. And over here, we've got a circle here for the head. And we've got our beak, which is kind of like a crescent. And I'll use, I'm not sure what this color is, but this is kind of like a triangle. I'll just dot that because it's not really there. But that's 
how I imagine things when I draw. So now I'm really gonna go ahead and go in and draw my duck. So I'll draw big, why not? Circle for the head, oval for the body, that triangular shape for the tail, and see kind of the beak about right here. And I see the wings on both sides, so I'm just going to kind of imagine it going in this direction. So the oval here, and then the front of the kind of thing. So this is very rough drawing. You can see my very, very messy lines. That's okay. This is all for practice. Um, again, it's not like a final work of art. I might not frame it later, but this is to guide me and advance my drawing skills. So now that I have that in position, I'm gonna go ahead and just roughly color it in. And again, I'm thinking about getting the color of my object, and it's gonna be very rough. So there is my <laughs> very rough filling of my duck, but you can kind of see it now. And then, let's see, my beak color is pretty bright yellow. I'm not sure if this is going to come out on this. Oh yeah, that is nice. Just fill that in. And now that I have this kind of like blocky colored shape, I'm going to start really refining those edges of my object. A final position for it. This is a great time to use this sharpener. By the way, let us know where you're tuning in from. We would love to know uh, what area you're in. Are you in the McAllen area? I mean, I know we've had people from uh, different cities before that actually come all the way out here and grab a bag just to participate, which is amazing. We love to see that participation. Or let me know what object you're drawing. We have someone drawing a basket with apples. Ooh! We have someone else using their water cup to draw, or they're drawing their water cup. Oh, nice. Uh, Carolina Peñas from San Antonio, Texas, tuning in. Oh, how cool! San Antonio! Hema from McAllen. Hello, everybody. Oh, my gosh. And Ava is here. She tunes in a lot. That's a lot of people. It's great to know you guys are still participating in these Workshop Wednesdays. This is episode 34. That's a lot of Workshop Wednesdays. Are you an OG Workshop Wednesday participant? <laughs> I've been here since the beginning. <laughs> you might have seen my face before. I've done a few in the past. It's been a while, but it's good to be back. Do something fun, different than, um, you know, my usual activities in the museum. We also have Zendaya and Armani from Alton, Texas. Oh, I'm out. Cool. That is awesome. Welcome, everybody. Once you, um, or even if while you're working, if you want to drop a photo of how, how it's going, uh, what you're doing, or if you have questions along the way, like how can we help you progress your drawing skills, let us know. I'm here to help in any way I can. Oh, someone's drawing their brother. How cute! <laughs> Someone else is drawing a toy trophy, and they're from Edinburgh. Oh, I have a little trophy I should have brought. How cute! And Sadie from Sullivan City is tuning in as well. Cool! So, this is what I have so far. Um, I know I went really fast with that, but don't think about that because I draw all the time. This might, you know, take some time for you, especially if you're a beginner, and that's just fine. It's all about, you know, learning as you go, and, you know, once you've done it the first time, maybe you can do it again or do a different object, and you're going to learn something new every time. So don't get discouraged if, again, it's not a final work of art. This is, you know, practice, and this is how we progress. You know, I definitely want to see what you all come up with in your drawings. I'm always afraid to do eyes on objects because I, you know, just feel like they're 
staring at me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Eli is drawing a rainbow. Oh, Eli, that is so cool. I want to see a picture of that rainbow. Okay, you guys aren't so scary, right? What do you think? <laughs> All right, so now that I have some color, I have an outline so you can see the parts of my deck. So if I turn it, you can maybe see what I'm seeing. Um, but there's like an arm there. So I'm trying to capture that, um, that shape within my shape kind of thing and kind of give some depth. So, you know, like this is in front of the body and then, you know, like this little lump back here, which is its other wing is behind the tail. So this is how you start to get some depth. So now that I have this in there, I have some colors, I want to start to incorporate my shadows. So when I think of shadows with color, I think of values of color. So I'm going to grab, I don't really see reds in there, but I do see some dark oranges and I maybe a little bit of red actually, if I look really hard. And I know there's some grays on my table for my shadows, so I'm just going to pull out all my grays. And go from there. Oh, don't forget the beak. My beak is yellow, which this is the color I use. And I'm going to grab some other yellows to, again, start getting in my shadows. Maybe I'll go even darker. The darker you go, the more contrast you're going to get, um, lights and dark colors, and the more depth you're going to create. So, you know, even if there's not strong red in there, it might come in handy. So I'm going to put this stuff aside and I'm going to work on the body for now. So I'm just going to go in and make that color more vibrant. Even doing this, if, if I were to make like a gradient, you can kind of see that 3D shape coming out. And that's because I'm just using the same color. The more vibrant it is versus how light or sa uh, less saturated something is. Saturated is a big word, but basically just means you have more vibrant colors in there. So how do you make the color darker? Darker, that's a great question. So I can do an example here on this wing real quick. So let me just focus on the wing for now. It's gonna take me a moment to color the body. But now that I have my main color filled in, which is orange, I can start using the next darker orange color, at least that I have. You might not be using orange, but choose that next value. So if you're using maybe purple, you have the colors already kind of set there in your uh, color box, or you just kind of figure out, oh, well, this purple is a little bit darker than this purple, but they're both purple. And maybe you can go darker. It's got a little, uh, little red in it, but let's see. So now that I'm... Oh, that's too dark. <laughs> there we go. Now that this will say that the shadow's down here, that's what I see. I just kind of start using this color to add the shadow. And I just lightly um, press and blend in because it does kind of curve around here. And it even curves around here, which is where I'm getting that 3D shadow. And so when I color, I'll do an example real quick on the back. When I color a shape, especially if it's got a curved end, I like to color in one direction. And then I like to just kind of imagine cross-hatching. So you go in one way and then you go in the opposite way. This is called cross-hatching. I use that technique when I color in something as well. So if I just finished coloring in this direction, I turn my hand just a little bit. And then color in another direction. It kind of cancels out those lines and gives you a real solid fill. So you can try that out. I always like to have scratch paper around. This is a great reference for practice as well. So now that I'm kind of doing that cross-hatching technique but with my coloring skills, you can see some depth coming out. Try to go fast. So I want to make sure that there's plenty of time for any questions and um, some great 
references here. So these are the three colors I'm looking at for the body. I just finished this color and now I'm going to go on to red. Now again, there's no really deep reds in here, but this is going to help me create that depth. So when I think of shadows, I think of, I, I don't, when, especially when I was a kid, I used to think of, okay, let me grab some uh, black to fill in the shadows. That might not work for all objects. Like this duck, my duck is very bright orange. You can kind of see that now. You can see the grooves within the wings that I have in my object. You can even go from dark to light, a little bit of unique blend. I hope this gives you a good idea of what I'm doing. Let me know if you have any questions. Did I explain that really well? This is what I'm, this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my object. So we are doing a giveaway this month for Workshop Wednesday like we do every month. Um, I believe we're giving away a rolling cart for your art supplies which I have one and it is the best thing in the world. If I even use it like for storage occasionally or especially when I'm working on a project and I kind of don't want to put all the supplies away, I just want them out of the way, I put them on the rolling cart and roll it aside. And what do you have to do to enter that giveaway? Oh, good. Yeah, that's a great question. So if you register for a workshop Wednesday bag, and you, um, uh, you are automatically entered in the giveaway. Uh, but if you want an additional entry, you just comment a photo below or just a comment in general. I believe every comment you put gives you an additional entry. And if you didn't get a kit, no worries. You're just tuning in, you're following along with supplies from your home. Just drop a comment or a photo to be entered into the giveaway as well. So no need to register. Your participation is what counts. Um, so, again, throw in a photo or just a comment, question even, let us know where you're tuning in from to enter in that. So again, if you didn't hear me earlier, Workshop Wednesday for June is already open. It opened as soon as we started this video. <laughs> so, I just kind of completed my body there. I'm going to move on just to make sure we're good on time. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into my shadow. So I'm gonna flip this over because for me, this is the position my duck is in. And oh, wow. Okay, see, now that I'm really looking at it, I see a little groove right here. And then I'm gonna use that to shape it in. There's also a shadow right in here. I'm gonna kind of just roughly because it's a very sharp shadow so there's no real blending this is what I'm seeing I'm gonna go in deeper with a darker color or a more vibrant color and you can kind of see that there is a shadow there it kind of has a double shadow double shadows are pretty tricky so if you're doing um, still like drawing with an object and you have multiple light sources coming from different spaces. You can even see with my hand, I have multiple shadows. So if you are doing still life, I recommend having one light source like a lamp or a window is good. Um, so if you're gonna take some days to do your drawing or your project, you wanna draw around the same time of day. <laughs> Because the sun moves. All right, so let's go back to this position. And I'm going to show you all what I see in the shadows on the table. So I'm not sure if you can see it from your perspective, but there's a shadow down here. And I'm going to start with a very light gray. My table here is brown, but I'm going to imagine some gray for this. And I'm going to roughly use those basic shapes just like I did in the beginning to figure out where my shadow is landing. So there's the tail shadow. It's kind of like an oval 
curly shape here. I guess I'm just using lines. But again, I'm using a light color just in case I need to redraw or reposition these lines. Just coming out a little bit more. There we go. And I'm going to shade block that in. see my shadow now. It's coming to life, but it's very light. So uh, usually in shadows, they have a gradient. So I'm going to go in with my next darker shade. So these are the grades I have. Trying to position them. Lightest, medium, darkest. So I just finished this color. I'm going to go on to this one. And I'm going to start right on the inside because that's where the darkest shadow is for me. I don't want to put this anywhere where there's light shadows. And then I'm going to, very light pressure, blend this outward. I always like to make sure that when I'm drawing, I position my hands somewhere super comfortable and I just use my wrist rather than run my arm over because that can allow, make you put harder pressure than you want. So besides different colored pencils, mm -hmm. does pressure affect the value of the color that you're using? Oh, yes, absolutely. So right now I'm using a light pressure just to slowly build the color that I'm using. Um, but if you're, let me flip this over again. So if you're using a light color, these they all work the same with light and dark colors, but I'll show you an example of this color. I'm gonna press it really hard and create a gradient, lightening up my pressure with my hand. I can repeat this if I need to, but you can kind of see that color starting to disappear. Next one would be this color. I'm just gonna do this really quick so you can get an idea. Lighten the pressure here. Oh, that kind of looks the same to me. Maybe I'll use the color black. Let's find a darker green. Oh yeah, there we go. That's the color I'm gonna want to use. So you can see the pressure going from strong to a light pressure. Now if we were to overlap these colors, I'll try to do this really quick. This is how I always do my shadows. Start with a light color, go on to the next one, you can overlap and create an even bigger gradient with more contrast. So that's kind of, this is essentially what I'm going for in my shadows, rather than just sticking to one color. And I'm going to take out this one because it looks pretty similar. So I'm going to stick to these three. Let's go back to this drawing here. So I just blended my colors. I'm going to do this just a little more. I'm kind of using kind of like opal shapes for this. <laughs> There's no wrong way to color in. I like to switch up the direction though, just so it gets nice. But all right, so now I'm going to make sure that you can really see that uh, depth by applying a darker color. I'm using a very strong pressure here, and now you can really see that curve underneath the rubber duck. And really make that stand out here, and I'm just going to blend in a little bit like pressure slowly building the color. Okay, let me turn it so I can see a little bit better what I'm doing. I was coloring upside down. And now you can see that 3D shape really popping out. So we have a little bit of time left, so I might not be able to do all these objects here when you think of, again, objects, so it's a great example to show that this is something that has a lot of texture. It's also very shiny and there's a lot of reflection on there. So something like this might take you some time. Even this pineapple, for example, 
if I run my hand over there, you can see there's a lot of texture on that. And there's even a lot of color as well. It's very shiny, and these leaves have some great detail. So again, when you're choosing an object that you just want to start, you're just trying it out, stick to something simple. I would say this is even more simple than a rubber deck, because this is mostly just round. But it is shiny, and it has a lot of color on there. So I'll go ahead and finish up this rubber duck. Um, actually, you know what? I think I think I'll use this time to talk about quick sketches. So this is still like drawing, but if you just want to practice more, um, well, I can do some quick practices with some objects. So if I wanted to just practice this shape, we can do like a speed drawing. So we have a round shape. We know that it's red. There's some green on it. And this is a great way to just kind of like practice with color. What are you seeing? I'm gonna do a new position. Still life drawing doesn't have to be exactly what you're seeing, but if you want to practice colors, positions, just to have some, again, good practice for references of what you're drawing, this is a great time to use your colored pencils. So again, darker color, I'm trying to get things to stand out. I love playing with color. Some funny shapes here. I'm not really doing it precise, but this is what I would do maybe if I were doing a speed drawing for practice. And using that dark color to get out those shadows. And I'm gonna avoid the spots that have the most highlights. So if I were to really think about it, there's some highlighting there. Avoid that area. More red here. I'm not really thinking too much about it. I'm just drawing the colors where I see them. And then that's what I have so far. And then we just kind of add a shadow to it. This isn't really what I'm seeing, but this is a example of the drawing. These are things I like to do, especially if I'm on the go and I just want to practice a good practice. I try to get in something as quick as I can for a good idea of what I'm saying. So I hope that's a cool reference that maybe something you can try. Maybe you don't want to sit there for a long time drawing the same object. I heard, I think someone said they were drawing their brother, right? I wonder if they're still in the same position as they were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> time. <laughs> so I hope this is helpful. This is just an idea again how to use color and apply them rather than using uh, like a regular pencil. How can we use color to create depth? And again and then these are some great examples of light to darker value. This is like a great example of yellow. This right here is a great example of green. And you have the purples. And then you want to consider your pressure when drawing, just like I did for my shadows or just like I did over here for these gradients. So I hope that's helpful. Don't forget those simple shapes. Cross hatching if you want to get some solid color in there. Oh, someone has a question for you. Oh, yes. Do you ever get frustrated if it doesn't come out the way you planned? Oh, yeah. Yes. That, that is a, a really good question because I went through this, this phase when I was younger. Um, and I, was, um, I, I started to learn that, oh, you know what? Uh, maybe I'm good at this. And I wanted to really practice. And uh, I guess I suddenly set a high expectation for myself. 
So I really started to pay attention to the things that I was doing wrong or the things that I didn't want it to look like or when I was doing a drawing. And yes, I got very frustrated. But um, then I took a lot of art classes when I was like in middle school and even up until high school. I just really, really appreciated art and I wanted to, to learn everything I could. And through all those years, I learned from my art teachers and even from my peers, like it doesn't have to look like what you're doing. It's all about the practice that you get. So even when I just did this, it was very rough. I wasn't focusing on getting the perfect final finish. When you try to do a perfect drawing, or if you're going to try your best to do a perfect drawing, that might take you some time. Some artists work through paintings and they take years sometimes, or months, or weeks, maybe even, who knows. So when you're trying to get something done really strongly, maybe consider some time that you're going to take to really focus on that that project, you know? But if you, um, again, if you're a beginner, you want to consider that, hey, I need some room to grow and I need some practice and that's okay. It doesn't come out the way you see it. Um, like this right here, this is not exactly as this looks, but the colors there and the idea of the shape it is is there and I try my best to throw on a, sh uh, a shadow. And I use all those techniques that I learned throughout the time. So I started to see art less as, uh, you know, has to be precise more than I just have fun doing the practice of it. So when I draw as well, a lot of the times when I draw objects, I don't just do it one time. I do it over and over again. Um, like flowers are something that I really like and um, maybe not the same exact flower over and over again, but flowers in general, I'll practice all the time because I just want to, that's just something I really want to get good at. So yeah, it definitely gets frustrating, but just remind yourself that you're there for the practice. You're there to really gain your skill and learn something new as you go. Being frustrated just means that you care a lot and that's perfectly fine. That means you, you have what it takes to push through and try your best. And again, that's how all artists do. Like, that's how they figure out their own styles as well. It's just by not quitting and taking advantage of, you know, what comes out of their, their minds or what they see. I hope that was a good answer to that question. It's a pretty big question. <laughs> not in a, not in a, that it's like a bad question or anything, but I hope I encouraged you to not give up. That's what my goal is. <laughs> she says thank you. Oh, absolutely. So I think I'm about done here. I know I could keep going with this. <laughs> I could keep going on a drawing forever. We also um, doing a drawing. It's okay to find a stopping point, even if it's not complete. I got far. I did my best. I used the techniques I used that are new and um, had fun while doing it. <laughs> so I think that's it for today. Um, this, again, this is a workshop Wednesday, still life drawing with colored pencils rather than your regular drawing charcoal pencils or number two pencils and just using color to really get an image of something that we see. Again, stick with something simple, especially if you're a beginner. Even if you're not a beginner, just go back to the basics and have fun. That's Going backwards is always great, you know, something like this. You want to do a quick drawing of what you see. Um, as long as the idea is there and, um, and the effort is there. So, all right, that's the end of Workshop Wednesday. I hope you had fun. Again, next month's Workshop Wednesday registration is open. And thank you to HEB Helping Here for making this happen. And uh, we hope to see you next time. Thanks for joining me. <laughs>